we're going to do a few more examples of drawing resonance structures, and we're also going to introduce a new concept called the curved arrow. The curved arrow is used when we're drawing resonance structures, and it's also used when we're drawing chemical reactions. And the purpose of the curved arrow is that it shows us the movement of electrons. It's really helpful for us when we're looking at resonance structures. It's helpful to see them with curved arrows in place because it helps, it makes it easier for us to see where electrons are going and where the electrons came from. So this is a tool that we use to help us visualize where electrons are going and also where they came from. Drawing curved arrows for some students is really intuitive and really easy. For a small percentage of students, curved arrows just just doesn't, it just goes backwards into their brains. So first I'm going to draw a curved arrow. This would be an example of a curved arrow. They literally are arced. You can draw them in any particular direction that you want. There's no rule about what exactly they have to look like. They just need to have some sort of arc to them so that we can distinguish them from equilibrium arrows, resonance arrows, reaction arrows, things like that. Um, and they do need to have, for now, they need to have a full arrow head. So you can't draw them with like a partial arrow head. That's used to indicate something else. On the curved arrows, the, the order, the way that they work, is that the bottom or the beginning part of the arrow, so this portion of the arrow, the non-arrow head, this is where the electrons start. So the location of where you start drawing, the electrons start at that site, and I'm going to erase this guy because he's in the way. They, they start at the bottom of the arrow, and they go to the arrow head. So let me show you with these resonance structures, let me show you how we would draw them. So first of all, we have to identify which electrons are moving because most of the electrons in this molecule are not moving. They're holding still. They're not going anywhere. The electrons that are moving are the double bond electrons um, between carbon one and two, and they're moving over to be in between carbon two and three. When we draw our curved arrow, we're going to draw the curved arrows only on this structure right here. The curved arrow is not going to extend from one structure to another, not for resonance. They're going to be just one curved arrow on this structure right here, and we are going to draw starting the curved arrow at where the electrons start. So we're going to be starting it right here, which is where the electrons start, and we draw the curved arrow to where the electrons are going, which is this carbon-2, carbon-3 bond. And that's it. That's that's all there is to it. So we, with this arrow, we are illustrating that the double bond is being relocated from carbon-1-2 over to carbon-2-3. Let's practice that some more. Here are two more examples. In the first example, we have the complete resonance structures, two complete resonance structures, and all we have to do are add the curved arrows, or maybe it's just going to be one arrow, to these structures. So we're going to be, again, we're going to be adding the curved arrows to the structure on the left to describe how it turns into the structure on the right, which means we need to pay attention to what is changing and also what is not changing. Let's highlight the bonds. If we're focusing on the structure on the left, let's highlight the bonds and things that are not changing. So the carbon-hydrogen bonds are not being moved. The carbon-oxygen single bond and the oxygen-hydrogen bond is not moving. The lone pair of electrons on the oxygen are not moving. The one of the carbon-carbon bonds is, is not moving, staying put. The, let's see, one of the carbon-oxygen bonds here is not moving, and these lone pairs are also not moving. So what is moving? Let's highlight that with a different color. The lone pair of electrons on the carbon, that's going somewhere else. 
and then half of the electrons in this bond, they are also going somewhere else. So we have to figure out where those electrons are going. Now, one of the, one of the first instincts that students have is that they'll say, oh, I see a lone pair here on this carbon, and it's not there anymore. But I see an extra lone pair here up on this oxygen. So clearly, one of our options must be that like that. Now, that's not correct. Electrons are, we know that they are not able to move that far. They can't jump that far across a molecule. So when electrons move in resonance structures, they have to stay associated with the atom that they were originally associated with. So the electrons that are on this carbon atom are only allowed to move to a carbon, one of the bonds that carbon has formed with another atom. They're not allowed to skip all the way over to the oxygen. So that tells us that if we have to find a place to put these electrons, and we also have to find a way to create this bond, those electrons must be what is being used to create that carbon-carbon double bond. Now, what else do we need to deal with? We have this bond right here that needs to be moved. And where is this bond allowed to go? Well, this bond could technically be moved to this location or this location or onto the carbon or up to the oxygen. It can go anywhere near where it is already located. But where we need it to go is up on top of the oxygen to become this extra lone pair that was created up there. Let's keep practicing. In the next example, we have all the atoms in place. We need to add curved arrows, and we also need to add formal charge to the second structure. So let's focus on, this time let's just focus on what we need to move. When we're looking at the structure on the left, what electrons need to be relocated or moved? And we can see on the left-hand side we have this lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen that are not present in the right-hand structure, which means we need to do something with them. Where are they allowed to go? They are only allowed to go into a location that is near where they're already located. So we want to put them right here in this spot. We can see from the structure that's where they need to go. So we'll draw a curved arrow starting at the lone pair of electrons moving over to form the carbon-nitrogen double bond. So we've got that arrow in place. And now we need to figure out what happened to the formal charge. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet when we're drawing resonance structures is that the formal charges are always conserved. So if your first resonance structure has a positive formal charge, your next resonance structure also needs to have a positive formal charge. So we have to figure out where that formal charge is going. And if we're looking, remember, we want to get to a point where we can see this quickly, where we don't have to keep using the formula valence minus bonds minus non-bonding electrons. So what when we're looking at these atoms, who is bonding in a weird way? Carbon has four bonds, so it is happy. Nitrogen has four bonds, and remember, that's not what it wants. Nitrogen wants to have three bonds and one lone pair. If we do the math on that, we'll see that that's where that formal charge is located. Let's practice two more examples. So here, our next one is getting a little bit trickier. We're starting with this molecule here. We have the connectivity laid out for us over here. We need to add curved arrows, formal charge, and also, we need to fill in the rest of the electrons in this molecule because they're not all located. So this is definitely getting trickier. So when we're starting over here with a resonance structure and we are kind of given free reign about where to move those electrons, what kind of strategy do we take? Well, for me personally, I like to focus on lone pairs because those are movable. And I also like to focus on double bonds or triple bonds because those are movable as well. Let's not pay any attention to single bonds because we can't move them. If we move a single bond, we break a bond, and that's not allowed when we're drawing resonance structures. 
I also usually like to tackle a molecule just by reading from left to right, like it just kind of in no particular order. So for this molecule, just by the way that my brain works, I want to start here because I'm reading the molecule from the left to the right, and this is the very first thing on the left. There's a lone pair of electrons, and there's also a formal charge, which we know formal charges move around in resonance, so I know I need to move that formal charge. And I do that by moving electrons. So I've decided that I'm going to start with these electrons right here. Where am I going to move them? Remember, you can't get too crazy. They can't go too far. They could go here. They could go here. Or they could go here. They're not allowed to go here because you are never allowed to make a hydrogen form a double bond. And so that means they're also not allowed to go there. So our only choice is to put them in this spot right here. That's the only place that they could go. So let's go over to our right-hand molecule and let's just draw that double bond in because we know that it's going to be there. So we've got one thing figured out. What if that was all that we did and we left that as a triple bond and a lone pair on the nitrogens? What if that was the only move we made? Would that be okay? Look at what we just did to this carbon. One, two, three, four, five bonds. Don't do that to carbon. That's not cool. That's not going to be okay. So that's definitely not something that we're allowed to do. And let's... Uh, get rid of those too. So we have to, we know that we have to take at least one of these sets of electrons in that triple bond and move them. They've got to go somewhere. Where do you want to put them? They Remember, they can't go too far. They could go this way or they could go this way. Now, what I don't want to do is keep them associated with this carbon. We're trying to relieve the burden on that carbon. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna have too many electrons on it unless we move some of those electrons away. So I'm gonna move those electrons over to the nitrogen and let's see what that would look like. One curved arrow moves two electrons only. So one curved arrow took my triple bond down to a double bond, and it gave me an extra lone pair on the nitrogen. Let's make a note. One curved arrow equals two electrons, because that's important. So what did we just do here? And is this going to be a valid structure? This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, so it's okay. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, it's okay. This nitrogen has two bonds and two lone pairs. Five minus two minus four is a formal charge of minus one, which is what we need, conservation of formal charge. We started with a minus one, we need to end with a minus one. So now you guys are ready for the ultimate. This is what these types of problems look like. Draw a resonance structure of CH2O. So here is CH2O right here. Use curved arrows to show the movement of electrons. These are how these problems are worded. And you have nothing over here on the right-hand side. You have to figure it all out on your own, but you're totally ready for this. So now this one is extra tricky because when we're looking at this molecule, this is formaldehyde, there are no formal charges on this guy at all. So that makes it a little bit harder for me to know where to start because I usually like to start at formal charges and work around them. But I know that I can move electrons, lone pairs, and I know that I can move a double bond. Like both of those movements would be allowed. If I wanted to move these electrons right here, all that I would be able to do with them is move them down into this location right here. And let's visualize, what does that look like? A carbon with five bonds? That's no good, we can't do that. So moving these electrons down is not going to be a reasonable option for us. What else could we do? We've got these electrons right here that we could move. Where do we wanna move them? We could move them up onto this oxygen, or we could move them down onto the carbon. We kind of have you know, a choice. There are usually more than one right answer when you're drawing a resonance structure. I'm gonna move them up. So I'm gonna take two of the electrons from this double bond, and I'm gonna move them up onto the oxygen. And let's draw what we get when we make that movement. So we've done nothing to the carbon-hydrogen bonds. The carbon-oxygen bond has become a single bond. The oxygen is still there. 
and it now has three lone pairs of electrons on it. And that is a valid structure. And before you get all excited, like we're done, you need to always be thinking about formal charge. We are, remember with our conservation of charge, we're starting with a formal charge of zero. We have to end with a formal charge of zero, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there are no formally charged atoms in this molecule. Look at that carbon. It only has three bonds. A carbon with three bonds and no lone pairs has a positive formal charge. Look at the oxygen. It has one bond and three lone pairs. That is an oxygen with a negative charge. Has the formal charge still been conserved? Yes, a positive plus a negative gives us an overall formal charge of zero. So we do have conservation of charge. We have drawn a valid resonance structure for this molecule with correct curved arrows.